Hello and welcome everybody to the Detection Challenging Paradigms podcast, episode zero, introduction. I'm one of your hosts, Jonathan Johnson. A little background on me is I graduated with a degree in cybersecurity where I am now working at SpectreOps on the detection engineering team. I like to open source projects, release blogs, and papers based off of research that I've done. Um, I like to really focus on the extraction piece of things, whether that is technology or methodology people might have. Outside of work, I really enjoy backpacking, camping, and competing in bodybuilding. Over to our next host, Jared. Hey, everybody. I'm Jared Atkinson. I uh, currently serve as the technical director for detection services at SpectreOps. Um, kind of got my start in the Air Force. I was a history major um, in, in university, and the Air Force actually mislabeled me as a computer science major. And so they put me in cybersecurity, and I kind of took to it and really enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, so I spent five years doing that. Uh, I was on the Air Force hunt team. And then I decided to leave the military and go into the private sector. And I've been a, a cybersecurity consultant ever since, uh, primarily interested in uh, automation with PowerShell, detection engineering, uh, those types of topics. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Luke, who's the producer of the podcast, and let him introduce himself. Hi, my name is Luke Payne. I'm the producer for this uh, podcast. I've been doing audio and video production off and on for... Uh, TV networks and some other stuff like that for the past six years or so. Um, I'm also a member of the adversary detection team at Spectre Ops. I've uh, been doing cybersecurity also for about six years, but that's not the reason I'm here. Uh, mostly here just to uh, manage the recording and uh, kind of social media aspects of the podcast. Back to you, Jared. Awesome. So we wanted to take this uh, episode zero, as Johnny mentioned, uh, and kind of introduce why we're doing this podcast. So why why yet another podcast about cybersecurity? So um, first of all, I like I think generally the three of us we we're really interested in kind of pushing this idea of detection forward. How do we improve and challenge kind of the preconceived notions that are inherent in uh, how we operate in in kind of a defensive uh, structure of of cybersecurity, uh, but Really, what we've noticed is that there there seems to be a lacking medium for these types of discussions. So, uh, on numerous occasions, I've been kind of perusing Twitter, which seems to be one of the the main places where you could go for this uh, this type of discussion. Um, and somebody will will say something interesting, uh, but maybe it doesn't jive up perfectly with what my my idea of uh, the topic might be. And so, I, I I might maybe ask a clarifying question or maybe uh, give a different perspective. And they'll they'll say, hey, this is really interesting, but Twitter's not the medium uh, to maybe have this discussion. And so I agree, right? You don't want to limit. It's really hard to pass off nuance, which a lot of these topics really depend on, uh, in 140 characters or whatever the limit is within a, a, a tweet these days. Um, and so we need something else, right? The the but the the problem is is that we never care. We say, hey, Twitter's not the right place for this discussion, and then we never actually have the discussion, right? And so. Uh, what we wanted to do was have a podcast where we invite, you know, experts or uh, practitioners within within cybersecurity, specifically focused on uh, detection, detection engineering, to have these conversations, right? And so um, we will bring them in. We'll have some conversations. At, uh, let them tell us what their their ideas, what what they've been interested in, what they've been working on. Um, kind of discuss that, but then also uh, have have a discussion about the pros and cons, maybe maybe give different perspectives. And so we don't necessarily want to uh, serve as educators, like we don't want to necessarily always be telling our perspective, but we really want to be taking in uh, other people's perspective. So I'll pass it off to Johnny to kind of talk about uh, a little bit further about this idea of uh, where we might take this podcast as we, as we move forward. Thanks, Jared. One thing I really want to note before moving forward is when we are challenging people's preconceptions, as Jared has mentioned, preconceptions do not define who you are, whether as a person or as an analyst. They're just the reason why you're performing the tasks the way you are. So when we are challenging these preconceptions, we are not challenging an analyst's intellectual capability. We are trying to identify their process structures. And one thing to identify is each person has a process structure which is given importance based upon a hierarchy. This hierarchy defines the reasons we perform a task at a specific time versus another time. A good example of this, a good cyber example of this, is say you're an analyst 
you're performing an, an investigation and you come across a malware sample. What are the steps that you're going to walk through to determine if the sample is malicious or not? Do you take the hash, correlate it to virus total first to see if there's any hits there? Do you detonate the malware inside of a sandbox to see what happens? Do you perform static analysis and walk through the code? And when walking through the code, what do you know to look for? How do you know something is malicious versus not? And then maybe another thing to identify is what is your definition of malicious? Because that could change between analysts. All of this is built upon a process structure and a hierarchy that we have created ourselves. We want to not only challenge these structures inside of this podcast that people might have, but also peel back these hierarchies to find the foundation by which these structs are built upon. It is often difficult difficult for us as individuals to take a step back and really reflect on our own structures, our own processes, because those come from those preconceptions and those have come from previous experiences that we might have had when coming across a specific scenario before. We want to challenge the implementation, but also the why. Why are you doing what you're doing? Is it are you performing and implementing this in a specific way because a previous mentor has showed you to do this? Are you performing this because you have found a methodology that has worked time and time again and you know that it is rock solid and a very good foundation, so you like to implement this over and over again? Or is it one of those, it's always the way I've done it, or that's just the way it is and that's how I learned? Because we come across that inside of security quite a bit where we might ask somebody, why are you looking into a at looking at strings inside of this code when we're, when we're performing reverse engineering? And oftentimes it's just, that's just what I know. So there's not an actual process or methodology behind that. So we want to start to peel back those things. We all, we all have preconceived notions, but that doesn't always mean that they're correct. They could be completely flawed. But we want to be able to be open to that mindset. We want to be open to understanding if they are flawed, how can I relearn and rebuild my structure? Do I need to rebuild the structure completely? Do I need to break down the structure and rebuild my foundational knowledge about the topic and then start to build the structure and hierarchy accordingly to that? These are all things we want to be open to because that is going to help us um, really grow as individuals inside of detection and response. And whenever we talk about this, as Jared mentioned, this not only goes for him and I and Luke, but also goes for like our guests. We want everyone to be open because we are completely open too to all these different um, new notions and new information and knowledge. We can only identify this by being critical to our structures. But before that can happen, we have to be open to the criticism and open to relearning, like I mentioned. The proper terminology by which structures and hierarchies are built upon are paradigms and axioms, which Jared will talk about. Yeah, thanks, Johnny. Yeah, so so we have this idea of a paradigm, and obviously uh, we're interested in that. And that's kind of central to our podcast because you know the podcast is called Detection Challenging Paradigms. And so, what what is a paradigm? Well, a paradigm is a basically a set of rules, uh, otherwise known as axioms. Right? These are accepted ideas. Uh, that govern how you approach a problem set, uh, specifically a, like a scientific problem set. And so uh, there's there's an author named Thomas Kuhn who wrote a book called The Structure of Scientific Revolution. And uh, this is and Thomas Kuhn used this term called a paradigm shift. And so his idea was uh, scientific endeavor is governed by paradigms, right? Which is which are governed by our understanding of the problem. And so uh, generally speaking, a scientific discipline is governed by this period of what they call normal science, which is where everybody tends to agree on the paradigm that's being used. And that paradigm kind of governs the types of experiments, the types of questions, the types of uh, ways that we move forward in that. Um, and then what, what ends up happening is uh, there are a number of different anomalies that the current paradigm is unable to answer. Right. And so, like, you know, when you have one anomaly, you're like, OK, maybe, you know, I'll get to that later. But eventually you kind of reach, the, reach this like critical mass of anomalies, which is like, hey, the paradigm that we're currently using to describe this thing, say it's cybersecurity, say it's physics, whatever it may be, um, there's obviously something missing because we have all of these questions that we're unable to answer, right? And so uh, then, we, then we enter into this uh, period of what Kuhn referred to as revolutionary science, right? And so that's, 
that's where uh, you you have to kind of re-explore uh, what the paradigm or redefine what the paradigm is, right? So that's that's what they call a paradigm shift is when um, a theory is uh, promoted that not only addresses known, everything that's known, but also addresses the anomalies that have kind of stacked up um, on the old paradigm. And so uh, in cybersecurity, like as I was reading this book, I, I thought it was extremely relevant to cybersecurity. So they're specifically interested in, um, you know, like the heliocentric view of the world for, uh, or maybe even like uh, Einstein's theory of relativity rel uh, compared to like Newtonian mechanics. Uh, but when we look at cybersecurity, there's there's a number of different paradigm shifts that uh, that we can see. So, for instance, a network centric view of uh, security monitoring versus maybe like an endpoint centric view with the new kind of like EDR craze, right? So, um, there there are different paradigms of how how this all happens, right? And so, one of the things is is we all have this paradigm that we're operating under, and uh, we may be explicitly operating under a paradigm as in we know that the paradigm exists we've defined it we've defined what our problem set is and what our goals are and that helps us establish that that kind of process that hierarchy of how we address that problem uh, but a lot of times what we see is uh, we're kind of operating in a passive manner which is where uh, we don't we don't know why the rules that we're that we're abiding by exist we just know that it seems to work um, and oftentimes we don't take a step back and evaluate whether or not that is the best approach. And so, um, and that, that's true of all of us, right? So all of us have a little bit of naivety when it comes to cybersecurity, right? So we have maybe the the topic that we're most interested in. For instance, I'm uh, kind of like an endpoint detection zealot, right? So like, I'm, I think that endpoint detection is is probably your best bet, but there's a number of different people that, that might have different perspectives to that, that I'm not considering. And so, um, you know, if you're, if there's a kind of a saying that says that if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? So a screw, for instance, might look like a nail. And if you're a hammer, you might try to uh, hammer that thing into, into the wall. Um, but what we're hoping to do through this podcast is uh, bring on experts or other practitioners that might enlighten us to the idea of a screwdriver. And that screwdriver, well, uh, you know, it's doing a s similar job to the, to the nail, um, it has different pros and cons that should be taken into consideration. And so uh, what we want to do is challenge our preconceived notions or the paradigm by which we are operating, uh, but also uh, discuss other practitioners' paradigms that they're operating under, um, evaluate that, think critically about it. And then hopefully uh, we can, whether we come to a conclusive or uh, Kind of like a, a accepted paradigm that we that we can operate under through like as a detection community. I don't know if that's the answer, uh, but certainly we can uh, bring up a number of different perspectives that allow you to evaluate your per your personal perspective um, of how to approach detection engineering or detection in general. So with that, uh, that kind of is our spiel of why we think this is important. Uh, why, why we decided to do a podcast. Generally, we want to create a medium uh, that allows for relatively long form discussion. So this is a short, short episode just to kind of give you a taste of what we're looking at. Uh, but generally, we would like to kind of expand this. So when we have a guest on, hopefully we'll have a, a longer discussion about different topics um, and how we intend to go about that, right? So the idea of like, let's establish, so you, we bring somebody on, they have a particular interest. We want to learn about that interest. We want to maybe question some of the the methods by which they're going into it and have discussions about why did you choose to go this direction? Did you consider this thing? And likewise, they can ask us questions and do the same thing, right? So an open idea. Uh, the idea is, is that your process or your paradigm is not representative of who you are individually. It's representative of your current understanding of that particular problem. And so uh, if, if we... Uh, kind of our theory is that if we let go of kind of this personal representation kind of perspective, then we're able to kind of grow more effectively and and not be not be offended by uh, critical critical questioning. Um, and so with that, we'll pass it over to Luke to kind of talk about the production schedule, how we plan to go about this, and then what uh, how you can uh, find the podcast episodes and interact with social media. Yeah, sure thing. So. The podcast main updates are going to be on our Twitter. 
which is going to be at DCP the podcast on Twitter. Uh, we have a website, which is dcppodcast.com. Uh, we also have uh, YouTube where you'll see the video version of the episodes uploaded there. The first episode is going to be on January 11th of 2021. And then every other Monday following, we'll have a new episode up for you just to allow time for editing um, and any other scheduling that we have to, to work around as three people with uh, full-time careers. So with that, uh, I think we'll go ahead and close out and we hope to see you as we kind of continue this uh, podcast journey through the rest of the year.